Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review this Atom Stack A5 Pro Plus laser engraver. This is a standard desktop engraver. It has a working area of 410 by 400 millimeters, and it also comes with a 5 watt module. This module has a compressed spot that uses multiple lenses to compress the laser dot. This is supposed to be better than most other standard 5 watt lasers because this machine claims to be able to easily cut through 10 millimeter wood. We will test it out and see if it can do that. If you need a larger working area, this machine also has an optional extension kit that will extend that y-axis to 850 millimeters. Without the extension kit, this machine costs $360. I would like to thank Atomstack for sending me this machine to review. With that, let's get started. We have four aluminum extrusions to form the frame, a gantry, a 5 watt laser module, an electronic enclosure for the motherboard, three legs, a power supply, a steel plate, and some tools. The assembly should be pretty easy. Just grab the step 1 screw back and align the extrusions. For the left side, the number side of the ruler should face inward, so we have the larger holes facing outward for the screw heads. The hole for the stopper should face the front of the machine. For the right side, there are no marks or rulers on the extrusion, but we should also let the larger screw holes face outward and the stopper hole to be at the front. Secure the frame with two screws for each corner. Then, we can grab the step 2 screw bag, the gantry, the electronic enclosure, and three legs. Just slide the gantry from the front. The enclosure should be installed at the rear left, and the leg should be installed at each corner. Use two screws to secure each leg and the electronic enclosure. Next, we will grab the step 3 bag, which includes two belts, T-nuts, and four covers for the aluminum extrusions. Let's start with the left side. Let the belt go over the wheel with teeth, and then go under the rubber pulley wheel to reach the front. The other end goes under the other rubber wheel to reach the back. Use a T-nut to secure the belt, and I will just leave a few millimeters of belt at the front for a better appearance, so we will leave the long side at the back. Try to pull the belt to make it tight, and then secure it at the back using another T-nut. We will do the same to the right side. Install the cap at the front. If it doesn't fit that well, use the hammer to gently tap it down and do the same to the left side. For the back, the manual recommends cutting the belt and putting the caps on, but I won't cut the belt yet as I may need to adjust the belt tension in the future, so I will just leave these caps. Next, we can slide the laser module on the X carriage plate and secure it with a thumb screw. Take the gantry stopper from the step 4 bag, install each of them on each side of the frame. As this machine has no limit switch, these stoppers can prevent the laser module from bumping into the frame. Then, we will connect some cables. There are only three cables from the motherboard. The shortest connector is for the Y-axis, then the X-axis, and then followed by the laser module. Connect the USB cable, as we need to use the computer to control this machine, and finally, connect the power cord from the power supply. I will use the steel sheet that came with the machine to protect my table when engraving, and I will also use the DIY laser tent I made as an enclosure. I've installed two LED lights inside and made an adapter so the smoke can be exhausted through my ducting. Okay, the hardware setup is done. We can now go to the computer and set up this machine. I am going to use Lightburn. Click Devices, Create Manually, select Gerbil, select Serial USB, and give the machine a name. In this case, it's Atomstack A5 Pro Plus. The x-axis length is 410 millimeters, and the y-axis is 400 millimeters. We can leave the origin as front left and disable auto home on startup as this machine doesn't come with limit switches. We will just move the laser module to our starting position manually. OK, click Finish and the setup is complete. Select the machine and the COM port from the list and the program will connect to the engraver. 
For the first test, I will engrave these little squares on the sample plywood and see the darkness we can get from different power levels. The feed rate is set to 6,000 millimeters per minute, and the power is down from using 100% to 10% laser power. Let's draw a frame and see if the job is within the size of the material. Okay, let's start the job. Depending on the darkness we want, I think anything from 40% to 100% is usable at 6,000 millimeters per minute. Next, I will try to engrave a photo. This Golden Gate Bridge night shot is really dark. I will use the same speed and set the power to 60%. The result is pretty good, so it seems 60% power is okay for this type of high contrast engraving. Then, I will do some cutting on 3mm plywood. Even a 5 watt laser should be able to easily cut this thickness. I will use 500 millimeters per minute and go down to 100 millimeters per minute with 100% power and see what the fastest speed we can use to cut this type of wood is. It seems 300 millimeters per minute or slower can cut through it completely. The one cut with 350 and 400 millimeters per minute is not that clean, and there is some leftover at the edge. I'm going to engrave this eagle and cut it out. I will use the same 6,000 millimeters per minute speed and use 100% power this time, as I want to engrave deep into the wood. For cutting, any speed at 300 millimeters per minute or less should be fine. Since the curve may need a slower speed to cut compared to a square, I will use 250 millimeters per minute. But here I made a mistake, as I should engrave the eagle first before cutting it out. However, since the plywood shouldn't move at all on the steel plate, I will just let it finish and it should still be fine. The result looks pretty good, but you can see the burn marks left from the wood on the steel plate. When I flip it over, the moisture of the wood left on the steel plate made the back of the eagle not very clean. For projects like this eagle, it should be fine as we won't look at the back, but for some projects that require seeing both sides, it will be better to cut with a honeycomb bed. I will borrow the honeycomb bed from other machines to try to cut this 3D ball. The speed of 250mm per minute and 100% power should be fine as we are going to use the same 3mm plywood. The honeycomb bed is doing a really good job. The edges of both sides of the ball are all clean. I also flipped the board and you can see the edges of the back of the plywood are also very clean. Next, I will try to engrave and cut out a logo. I will use the same speed of 6,000 millimeters per minute and 100% power to engrave and use the same 250 millimeters per minute for cutting. Do a preview and make sure to do the engraving first before cutting. Okay. Let's send the job to the machine. It looks pretty good, and let's flip it to check the back. The back is also clean. Afterwards, I will try some thicker wood. I will use this red oak quarter inch board, which is about 6.35 millimeters thick. As I don't think this laser module can cut this board with 150 millimeters per minute or faster, I will just try to cut from 150 down to 50 millimeters per minute. As you can see, we can successfully cut through with any speed from 50 to 100 millimeters per minute, but the moisture of the wood left on the steel plate makes the back of the wood look unclean. Next, I will try to cut this half inch poplar wood, which is around 12.7 millimeters thick. I will use 100 millimeters per minute with 100% power. After the first pass, it almost cut through. I will do another pass and see if the wood can drop off. It seems it didn't help with another pass. I will flip it over and check. 
I think it cuts through almost 11 millimeters, but the focus of the laser can't reach the final one to two millimeters of the board. So no matter how many passes I try, it may just do around the same. To confirm that, I will use the same speed and power to do 10 passes and compare the results. I also tried to move the laser head closer to the wood, leaving just around 1.5 millimeter distance. As you can see, it also cuts through about 10 to 11 millimeters and stops. So I would say this five watt laser module can cut through 10 millimeters of solid wood with just one pass, but it won't help much if you do multiple passes. Then I would try to cut some sample acrylic. I will cut out a few letters from it using 100 millimeters per minute and 100% power. It cuts through completely and every letter is clean and usable. In fact, I can use a faster speed as the laser also engraved on the steel plate underneath. That means it can also engrave pretty well on steel. I will start the same job, but this time I will engrave directly on the steel plate instead. As expected, it can engrave on steel. I tried to use 99% isopropyl alcohol to wipe it, but I just can't remove it. Finally, I will make a few rulers from the leftover plywood instead of just throwing it away. I will still use the 6000 mm per minute for engraving and 250 mm per minute for cutting. The edge seems a little bit dark, so I will make another one using the same engraving feed rate but speed it up to 400 mm per minute and run two passes for cutting. It seems the edge on this longer ruler is much cleaner. Okay, here are all the parts I have made so far. Let's talk about what I like about this machine. 1. As a 5 watt laser module, this compressed dot laser module works a little better than a regular 5 watt module. It can't completely cut through the half inch solid wood, but it cuts deep down to around 10 millimeters with just one pass. For thinner quarter inch solid wood, it can cut through completely with a single pass at 100 millimeters per minute. 2. It uses one thumb screw to adjust the height of the laser module, which is more convenient than machines that use screws and a screwdriver. It also maintains better leveling of the module than machines with one thumb screw at the side. 3. The protector at the front is better than those orange or red acrylic. With this protector and my laser tent, I actually get two layers of protection. I feel safe working with it even without wearing the safety goggles, but of course, having the goggles and a triple layer of protection is even better. 4. It has a slightly taller gantry that allows you to work with taller material without having to make some feet to raise the machine. 5. The power button is a switch, so it can also work as an emergency stop as you can just toggle it to cut the power. This is better than using a power button that requires you to press down for a few seconds. However, I would also like to suggest some improvements. 1. The extra steel plate that came with the machine is nice. With this plate, you don't have to find another piece of thick plywood to protect the table. It's good for engraving, but when you do cutting with it, the moisture from the wood is going to remain on the surface of the metal plate, making the back of your project look messy. I would suggest not using the metal plate and instead using a honeycomb bed. Even a smaller honeycomb bed would be better than this steel plate. 2. The front protector provides better protection compared to the acrylic ones, but the trade-off is that it's difficult to align small material, as it's hard to see the laser dot of the preview frame with this protector. 3. For the extension kit, it's nice to extend the machine to 850 millimeters in the y-axis. The kit came with two longer extrusions, two longer belts, and a longer cable. The price is not cheap. It costs you another $120. With the price of the machine, the total cost of the same machine with the larger working area is almost $500. I would suggest that the manufacturer can add a larger version, use the longer parts to replace the standard parts, and just charge the difference between them. In this case, those who need a larger working area machine can directly order a larger machine at a lower price. In conclusion, this is a solid machine with a pretty good 5 watt laser module. If you're interested in this machine, I will put the link under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week that uses multiple lenses to compress the laser dot.
which is supposed to be better than most other standard 5 watt lasers because because, because why Adam stack a5 pro plus laser engraver this engraver is just there's also an optional extension kit wait what, what?